Remember the movie Terminator? Humanoids are now becoming a reality or will be in the coming years. These are changes bound to happen to affect our society. My research focuses on how different generations respond to this new concept and how new generations might adapt. Have you ever wondered what humans think about the technology changes occurring in society? Well, in this presentation, you will gain an understanding of what people have been feeling towards these humanoid robots and how these presentations might change in the future. To start, let me introduce myself. My name is Kaina Sahani and I'm a junior at Stevenson High School. I was born in Bangalore, India and lived there for the first 10 years of my life before moving to Chicago, which is where I'm presenting from. I am deeply invested in technological advancements such as artificial intelligence and believe that the right application of these technologies will help us make the world a better place. I'm a, I have also have a passion for music and I'm an Indian classical dancer with multiple stage performances. Applications of newish technology is going to be critical and thus I choose to research on this topic. While humanoids are a new technological marvel, the question is, how do different generations in our society respond to them? This is my humble attempt to research on AI-related technologies and how it affects our society. Not only was I able to learn new concepts, but I'm also able to learn more about human interactions and perspective changes that may occur. I want to express my sincere gratitude to my mentor, Ms. Reinecke. This was my first formal research and without her guidance, I would not have been able to be as successful in completing this project. Thank you, Team Polygens, for creating such a creative platform for students like me. Now let's get started. The Uncanny Valley was originally defined by Japanese robotics Mishiro Mori, who presented an article in 1970 about human, human responses to human-like robots. In his essay, Mori describes the uncanny valley as a descent into eeriness, evidenced by the graph of how humans perspectives robots. His hypothesis suggests that as humanoids and animated figures become lifelike, they eventually become unsettling and eerie. These feelings are usually caused when humans interact with something like that is human-like but is, has obvious differences. Although our living, all through our living experiences, we develop distinctions between non-human and human. However, a humanoid is something completely different. It is human, but it's not. It's human-like, but it's not. These feelings can result from a variety of features, including the tonality of the robot's voice, smoothness of motion, and facial composition. There is usually a clear distinction between something that is biological and something that is mechanical. Humanoids are clearly mechanical, but they also are signal typical non-mechanical properties, like being conversational, being able to walk upright and having knowledge. People tend to consider others' minds across two dimensions, experience and agency. Psychological experience consists of phenomenons of mental capacities like hunger, pain, pleasure, rage, desire, personality, consciousness, pride, embarrassment, and joy. Psychological agency, however, consists of capabilities like self-control, morality, memory, emotion recognition, planning, and communication. One example of how this shows in our society is through Sophia. Something that looks like human but is not creates a sense of confusion and blurs the line between human and non-human. Sophia, a humanoid robot developed by Hanson Robotics, has become designed to look and act like a human being. The robot has been programmed to mimic human expressions and emotions and has been given the capability to hold conversations with humans. The noticeable imperfections in her likeness, speech, and behavior can lead to feelings of eeriness and revolutions between and observers. Now that we have covered the basics of the uncanny valley, let's in get into how adults respond to this. A wealth of research suggests that adults are especially prone to feeling uneasy towards humanoid robots. For example, when researchers prompted adults participants to interact with either a complex text-based chat box or a more complex avatar, both reading, both reading its responses to the participants aloud, adults tended to feel a greater negative emotion when engaging with the complex avatar. They also, consist, they can also considered it to be a less effective communicator and more weird than, other, than the simple chat box. This shock leads to them having an uneasy feeling towards these robots because of the intimidation that follows these tasks. 
Because of this, adults struggle to determine the difference between biological and mechanical things. The uncanny valley may not affect children as much as it does adults. The main reason for this is that their brains are still developing and classify anything they see as normal or something that belongs in this world. Children are more likely to deem robots as having a moral understanding than adults. Because of the development happening, children are more likely to deem robots, oh, sorry. One study shows how children start to believe robots have a moral understanding. While playing with robots named Robobi, the children started to view the children as the robot as something that had feelings or a moral understanding. When the robot was forced into a closet instead of playing, 53% of children said it was immoral for the robot for, to be forced into a closet. 73% agreed that it was unfair for the robot to skip its turn forcefully. For reference, 98% of children said it was unfair for a human to be forced into a closet or out of a turn. The majority of these children had developed a bond with this robot and started to believe that it had an actual moral understanding or feelings, potentially training their brain to believe that robots are like humans. With that, it is also important to note that the uncanny valley develops in children later in life as their brains grow to be more sophisticated. As children start to understand the, and accept their surroundings, they start to have more sophisticated brains, leading them to have perspectives on what they deem as natural or unnatural. Given these advancements the, and children's exposure to these new technologies, it is hypothesized and that future generations will demonstrate diminished sensitivity to the uncanny valley. Interacting with robots on a daily basis can decrease the uneasiness the person might be feeling. Since these robots are being introduced to children at a young age, as they grow up, they may also start to normalize these multi-use robots instead of being disgusted or uncomfortable by them, like adults are now. Humanoids have helped people with head and facial movement disorders practice interacting with human beings. They may ultimately change the usage and understanding of robots in the future because they will be used to support humans to overcome compl complications or fears. Robots nowadays have also been used to teach kids how to read, write, and many other things. This may eventually lead to a more open-mindedness of robots and their interactions with people instead of the weirdness attributions to robots in today's society. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening to my new idea and allowing me to present. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Nice work. Uh, we do have one question in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, what research would you like to see next about the Uncanny Valley? Um, while I was researching for this project, I noticed that there wasn't much about how it would be in the future. I would mm -hmm. like to see how technologies that are like, for example, a mobile phone. I know that some people might still be a little confused or concerned by the idea of a mobile phone and the functions of it, since they were when they were kids, they didn't have these technologies. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that could be a basis of how the uncanny valley could presume itself in the future. And I would like to see more research on, but more towards that and how technology now has affected. Hmm. Yeah, super interesting. Yeah, um, I'm also curious, uh, just broadly, what was kind of the hardest part of researching the uncanny valley? You mentioned not being, there's, there's not a ton of research, so maybe that's one is there anything else that you kind of bumped up against while you're doing the, your research? I That was the main problem because while I was mm -hmm. researching, there were some hypotheses, but there wasn't a clear one. Mm -hmm. Some people were predicting that it wouldn't be, it would have been changed in the future and then some were predicting that it would. So it was hard to come to a consensus based on previous research on the changes that might occur. And based off of your research, you know, there's kind of like, there's a really fundamental question mm -hmm. here which is do you think that robots have emotion or do you think what's your perspective on robots kind of the venn diagram between robots and people kind of having that intersection grow over the last couple of years what do you think um i feel like the distinction is just going to be more clear now because mm -hmm. in today's society since the robots are being introduced um there's like a the Venn diagram, like you said, between 
the emotions and the non-emotions is a little more clear. Some mm -hmm. people have a clear, like a hardcore understanding, like, oh, this does not exist. And some people are like, oh, yes, it does have feelings. Mm -hmm. um, in the future, I feel like it's going to merge and people are going to have come to a consensus to be like, oh, it does have feelings and it does help our society instead of being concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one day instead of ha everyone having a smartphone in our pocket, we'll all have a robot or a our own self, our own little companion at home that has 10 smartphones yeah. in their pocket that'll do everything that we want them to do without us having to do it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, well, great job on your presentation.